name is Forrest Smith and I'm the Public Information Officer for the Mesa Fire Department and welcome to What's on Fire. Coming up, we'll talk with the deaf mother about the importance and challenges of having smoke detectors in the home. We'll also tell you why you have a better chance of surviving a cardiac arrest just by living in Arizona. But first, at least 60 million Americans are estimated to have a medical condition that should be known during an emergency. But only a fraction of those wear a bracelet or carry any other type of medical information, according to a 2010 article in the Wall Street Journal. Laura Donaldson introduces us to a woman who's worn a bracelet for 30 years and explains why the piece of jewelry could save her life. 120, go ahead and shock everybody clear. Shock. In emergency medicine, a lot of times we have to make uh, life-changing uh, life decisions based on very little information. Dr. Joseph Winchell is Banner Desert Medical Center's EMS medical director and ER physician. He says this bracelet, called a medical ID, could give him all the information he needs to make those life-changing decisions. That's a pretty nasty EKG, huh? A medical ID is a bracelet, necklace, or card that identifies an important medical condition or allergy that might require immediate attention for the person wearing the tag. Dr. Winchell says this information can make all of the difference. There are a lot of medical conditions that can mimic other medical conditions. Uh, and if we didn't have that information available to us, uh, that may lead us down the wrong path. So it's as simple as touching, and in five seconds, 175. So I'm high. Jennifer Allen has diabetes and wears an insulin pump. She's worn a bracelet for 30 years. And you can tell it's not brand new because it's scratched. I've been wearing it. <laughs> and says as a child, she hated wearing the tag. But now she's had a change of heart. I guess it's finally realizing that the tag doesn't identify myself. It just identifies the opportunity that if I need assistance, then someone can provide that quickly to me. And that's exactly what Dr. Winchell says he'll be able to do all because of this tiny piece of jewelry. For What's on Fire, I'm Laura Donaldson. As you can see from that last piece, owning a medical bracelet is extremely important and helpful to first responders and fire crews. We're now at Banner Desert Medical Center just to show and demonstrate how important these bracelets can be for you. Now let me introduce you to Dr. Joseph Winchell. He's the Emergency Medical Services Director here at Banner Desert Medical as well as an emergency room, emergency room physician. Dr. Winchell, how do you do? Thanks for taking Great the time Forrest. to Thanks us. for having us today. I appreciate it. You know, one of the things that we deal with in the field is coming across a patient who we may not have any information on. There may not be a, respond, a responsible party there. So basically, we have a patient who's dealing with the medical condition and we're not able to react to it. So when we find these medical bracelets, that gives us a great deal of information to help us treat. Uh, what do you find in your end here once we bring the patient in or if you have a, a walk-in or somebody bought in who doesn't have that type of information? You know, I agree with you 100%. A lot of times we have the same uh, struggles that you have in the field we have here in the emergency department, and that is a lot of times we don't have the adequate information that we need to take care of our patients. It would be great if we had an adequate history and physical, but sometimes we don't. Uh, we, and when a patient comes in either by a private vehicle or through emergency medical services, and we don't have that information, we have to treat the patient based on educated guesses and what we feel the patient may be suffering from. If that patient were to have a medical alert bracelet or a necklace maybe, that would just alert us to maybe some medications that they might, they might be taking, uh, certain medical conditions that they may have, that would at least help us guide and more uh, guide our treatment and direct our treatment based on their presenting complaints as opposed to just making a general educated guess. Right, and that's exactly the same thing that happens to us in the field because we'll have somebody the same thing where we're not sure what's going on and we have a certain algorithm or a flow chart that we follow as far as that treatment. And I know, for instance, if we're dealing with the patient uh, to say, for instance, if they're a diabetic, uh, how would you deal with something like that if you didn't know that they were, uh, in fact, a diabetic and didn't have this bracelet? Sure, that's a very good point. And a lot of times with diabetics, especially in patients that have low blood sugar or hypoglycemia that we, that we call in the medical field, uh, a lot of times those symptoms mimic a patient that may be having a stroke or a patient that may be having a, a drug overdose. And unfortunately, sometimes we think that the patient may be a, a drug overdose when actually their blood sugar may be critically low. Uh, and it's a, a very treatable cause. And, and a lot of times when we reverse that, the, that low blood sugar, you know, then, then the patient comes back and they're at their normal self again. So something that could be very simple 
Uh, usually, uh, if the patient doesn't have a medical alert bracelet or some information to give us, you know, they uh, have they uh, they undergo un unnecessary testing or procedures. That really all they needed was blood sugar. In fact, one of our nurses here at Banner Desert, uh, Jennifer Allen, uh, is uh, has has been with us for quite some time. She herself has uh, diabetes, and she herself wears a medical alert bracelet just for that reason, in case something happens and her blood sugar were become uh, uh, too low. At least her doctors and the and the and fire department would know, you know, what to what to treat and what they're treating. Jennifer. Jennifer, how do you do? Thank you for joining us. Absolutely, for us. thank you. Good to see you. Um, that's a great example of um, the need for wearing a medical ID bracelet, um, not only for my diabetes, but I wear an insulin pump. And so part of my identification information includes that, so that you may see an individual present to the um, emergency department, you're going down all these avenues of the what ifs, could be's, et cetera, and may not notice the pump that is attached to me. So you're busy treating and even identify the low blood sugars and you're busy treating that, but you're working against the insulin that's infusing. So it helps identify not only the medication, but the um, device, um, uh, the medical device that may be associated with the patient so that um, you can be on top of both of those situations. Well, how about that? Now, I noticed that uh, bracelets have become more advanced as we go along with technology and as designers are state taking these into consideration. I know I've been involved in diabetic uh, diabetes camp and the pumps have changed themselves where sure. they're a little more fashionable and, and uh, where they fit in more with what you're wearing and as such. How is it with the medical bracelets? Are you seeing those have changed at all in some time? Well, I've been diabetic for um, over 30 years. And back in the day, your only option was to go to your local drugstore and you pick out that big heavy mm -hmm. bracelet and the, the big um, um, identifier on the outside. And um, you already felt a little self-conscious about what's going on. And then you had this, um, this big piece of jewelry. So things have changed. There's um, different opportunities that you have um, to kind of design it. There's different companies, especially now with the internet. Um, you can go on, you can design what you would like it to look like. You can have it inscribed with what you needed to say and then can pick out what you want so that the devices can be, no matter how it'll fall on my hand, then in the emergency field, someone should recognize that, oh, this is something, not just a piece of jewelry, but something we need to look at. They have it in dog tag style. There's all kind of, um, um, looks to what's going on. My insulin pump itself, so you may think it's a pager or a cell phone, but it's as simple as attaching that under your clothing so you don't see that to the outside of what you're wearing. So that also adds to the confusion when you're ill and can't speak for myself, um, that I need to make sure that somebody knows that I have um, an underlying condition that they need to be watching as well. Oh, that's great. Now, uh, doctor, in your experience, are you finding a lot of your colleagues also are recommending using these medical bracelets as well? Oh, absolutely, uh, both with internal medicine and also our cardiologists. Uh, our cardiologists, now we have patients that have automated internal defibrillators or a shocker uh, for, uh, in, in layman's terms and patients that have underlying cardiac uh, problems. Mm -hmm. And in, when, when these patients come in, again, if they've had an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest, uh, and they're wearing these bracelets that, we, that they have on their body, at least we could be aware of the medications that they may be taking, and sometimes these medications could have contributed uh, to their to the out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. It also alerts us that, that this patient does have that device, and something that we could interrogate and see what may have happened to this patient that led to them to have this, this important event. Tell you what, on our end, when we're doing our charting in the field, that's one of the things that our fire paramedics will do, is we'll take this information, put it on our chart, and then pass that on, and also say that individual does have a medical bracelet, and that's where we got the information from. Now, when you're in, Jennifer, are you finding as far as when you've come in contact with uh, first responders and or firefighter paramedics, have you heard any feedback from them with regard to these bracelets? Sure, it's in those stories when you stop afterwards. How did we get to where we are? What's going on with that patient? Where an individual will share, oh, if I'd only known. Mm -hmm. Because there'll be some of the information that will come forward, especially now we you know in an electronic medical record world, once we identify who the individual is, can pull it up and we have some of that history if they've been um, a utilizer of our services before. And the first responder would say, oh, if I'd only known that would have saved time or minutes or the direction that you went with the care that you started. So it really um, does give you that little bit of information, just like any other point in our lives. When you have that little bit of information, it can help you make that decision that much faster. That's what the medical ID bracelets can offer you. 
Now, I wonder whether or not we're going to see anything, technologically speaking, where you actually have information that you can download or pull off these bracelets that you could actually, in the form of like a USB drive. I've seen those out there, too. Is that something you think is going to come along where you actually have a piece of jewelry that you could actually uh, download or put that information in? I think anything's possible in our technology now uh, with uh, regards to microchip technology. Uh, the information that we have in these pacemakers that we uh, implant in patients, also in their automatic uh, in, in internal defibrillator or the internal shocker, uh, we could interrogate uh, that information by simply placing a, a wand over that device. And that wand would, would extract the information from that device and it prints us out about a 40 page uh, 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 history of every heartbeat that that patient had. And that could help us uh, tell us uh, wh at, at what point uh, they had this arrest or at what point they had this heart rhythm disturbance. And so if we could do it, if we're doing it now with pacemakers and defibrillators, absolutely, I think we'll be doing it very in the near future with, with other medical bracelets. Oh, that's great. Well, Dr. Winchell, thank you very much for taking the time. We do appreciate it. it Jennifer, pleasure. thank you so much. Appreciate this information. You can find many different styles of medical bracelets online. Look for one that allows you to list your name, medical issues, and allergies. But most of all, make sure it has that universal medical symbol. I'd recommend either a bracelet or a necklace because as first responders and firefighters, that's where we're going to look for your medical information. Coming up, smoke detectors save lives, no matter who you are. We'll look into smoke detectors for everyone, not just the hearing community. Stay tuned.